hello. Open your Bibles to John chapter 8. And we're going to continue from last week and then next week also talking about uh, sanity, what we call it in times, perilous times. Uh, I think these next few messages are very important, probably the most important things I've shared. And I've been in the ministry 40 some years, but it's important that we know where we are, where we're going, what the world is around us, what the enemy's plan is for us, and to stay peaceful, to stay in the Lord, to stay uh, wise, knowing what to do. And here we see in John 8, there's nothing new under the sun. There's always been an enemy, and unfortunately in churches, when I was going there, no one ever talked about the devil. He's under your feet, you have all this. Really what we were teaching was humanism. And that's a big part of what they're teaching now. They're not preaching the gospel, they're teaching humanism. You can do it. Your words, your faith, everything's about you. True Christianity uh, has an enemy. And here, John, verse 37, this is Jesus speaking. And I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. It's funny, when I was reading this about, they think they're Abraham's seed, and Abraham is our father, reminding me of the Abrahamic covenant, covenant. Is that what they called it, the Abrahamic? The Abrahamic Accord. Um, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you, shall, you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. Now think about that, and think of the, ways, the days that are coming. They hate the truth. Who are these people that hate the truth? These people. And they haven't went away. And Jesus is letting us know we have, he had an enemy, and if we follow him, we have an enemy. And they're not our enemy, they're God's enemy. Right. So it's this war that we're in. And he said, you seek to kill me. Think of that, a spirit of murder and death because of the truth. And we're coming into, everything's called hatred now. Yep. Anything that's uh, against the agenda is called a different name. Words are changing. And we know we have no hate towards anyone. Just so you know, we um, want everyone to know the Lord. We don't care who you are. Come as you are. He'll change you. He changed us. <laughs> None of us were good enough. So we're not speaking against anyone, and I never do. But I want truth. I want to speak truth in these days that we have where we still can. It's very important that you share these messages because too many people are not talking. And I don't know if it's because they don't study, they don't study to show themselves approved, or they've been bought out, or whatever, but the church world is just, you know, the Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people aren't too smart. So <laughs> the world is wiser than the people of God because we just like follow the leader, we're, you know, like sheep that just go off. But we're supposed to study to show ourselves approved. Research, do your own research. But here we see we have an enemy. They wanted to kill him. They want to probably in the future kill us as well if we're living that long. But he said, I speak that which I have seen my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. So not everybody is a child of God. Here's you need to see. There's children of God, and then there's the children of the enemy. They, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth. Why did they want to kill Jesus? Because of the truth. Which I have heard of God, this did, did not Abraham. So here we're seeing that Jesus is saying he's above Abraham and they want to follow Abraham. They don't want to move on. Ye do the works or you do the deeds of your father. Then said they unto him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. And this is what they're doing today. We're all of one God. We're all unified. And Jesus said unto them, who are them? Those are the religious leaders. If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Boy, isn't that the truth? You try to tell people stuff. Different page, different chapter. They don't get it. 
You are of the father, the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. Why are we having a culture war? Because they're following the same spirit that Jesus was talking about. You are of the father, the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. So he is what? because when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of lies. And with many people now in the political realm, you say, if their mouth is moving, they're lying, yeah. right? Now, another scripture. So here we see that Jesus had an enemy, and the whole thing was they didn't want the truth. And today we see there's, we're being censored, we're being shadow banned, and... It's not going to get better. Unfortunately, this is the beast system, and the beast is after our children. Yep. Psalms 83. This is another one that I found. Psalms 83. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. Verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. This is really against the Lord. This is a battle against the Lord, what he made, how he's made it, how everything now is being inverted, everything is being changed. They hate thee. They have lifted up their head. It's not new. He's always been around. Some of the things that I'm going to talk about uh, this week and next week have been around for a long time. And we are slow to catch on to what's going on. But now the veil is being lifted and people see there is definitely something that's going on behind the scenes. What is going on? And I want to bring some of those things to you today to help connect the dots. And he said, they, the enemies, they hate thee. They've lifted up their head. They have taken crafty, crafty counsel against thy people. That word crafty reminds me of, they never tell the truth crafty it's kind of like twisted they infiltrate our churches they craftily speak right and consulted against thy hidden ones against thy hidden ones against the ones that walk with the lord psalms 2 against the lord and his anointed they have said come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of israel may be no more in remembrance now the israel then and the israel now are not the same. The deception is they want you to think that this is the same Israel. It's not the same Israel. And it's now Zionists. It's not Zionism. I'm not going to get into that whole thing. But that will shake you up if you don't know what's going on with Israel. Because um, that's another huge, huge, huge deception. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Now that word confederate Confederate means they are united. They are united against the Lord, against Christianity, against true Christianity. They are united against the Bible. So it says here the Confederate means the united or conspiracy, hidden plan. All it is, people talk about, oh, you're a conspiracy. It's a hidden plan. It's in the Bible. They tried to kill Paul. It was a hidden plan to kill Paul. And God is opening up doors and people are starting to see there have been plans, and we're going to share some of these plans, the, the goals of what the new system are. So they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against me. And then in Revelations, it talks about the synagogue of Satan. So this is not new. We have an enemy, but the problem is no one knows who the enemy is because in churches, they talk like he's dead. He's not really alive. And as a result, we've all we're just so consumed with our church meetings that we let our cities go, our city councils go, our school boards go. We really didn't probably step in places where we should have. And as a result, there's an enslavement going on. So I'm going to talk a little bit about right where I left off last week on the goals of a 2020, 20, 30. I'm not going to go into this too much because you can only take a little at a time. It's like, oh, that's enough. But the United Nations set out with a goal in 2015 to transform our world and reimagine it the way they see fit under the guise of sustainable 
development. If you've noticed now, and I've warned you years ago, that everything's got to be sustainable. And the lie is, what they're saying is sustainable. It's not sustainable. Right. It's a way, and really, if, if you can condense all of it, it's, it's control. It's a matter of things are coming into more and more Liberties are taken away and more and more control. Throughout the years, most people have been under the illusion that these so-called sustainable goals were for the betterment of mankind until now. Because it's not until people feel it in their pocketbooks, really, that they can tell something is going on with the inflation. We're going to talk about that. Things that are going on. Uh, Sustainable goals who wish to control the world by making humans obedient, unhealthy, under the name of health, uneducated, under the name of education, <laughs> unwise, unknowing, financially broke. People are struggling now with things they've never struggled with. The insecurity of the future of going away from the dollar and going to digital is a very scary thing because everything we knew is changed. Things are changing. Government trading, world trading, is everything's changing. Financially broke, lacking identity or gender. I mean, who thought we would have been fighting this? But if you were with me from years ago, I, pr I preached on androgyny mm -hmm. and what their God is. So this shouldn't be a surprise to you that have been tuning in. We knew that this was going to be an apocalypse, that this is going to be huge, and here we are, and we're stepping in to just the beginning of the days of Noah. I believe things are going to, uh, morally and sexually, we're already seeing it. We're seeing so much happening now, and that's why the Bible says, as in the days of Noah, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. And God's going to shorten these days for his people's sake. Thank God for that, right? Um, and why, why they want to track and trace their every move. AI now with everything going on. And we're going to talk about next week again, uh, Dr. Richard Day, because he was an insider. And the fruit of it is he knew what was going to happen, and it's happened. It's a lot of it I have never shared. I'm going to share some things I haven't shared before next week. But it's important to know that there's a plan Things are being planned, things are being orchestrated, and the beast system is rising, just like the Bible says. And I was reading some chapters in Revelation today, I was like, that's scary. This is really scary stuff when you see the enemy rising like this. But it's, it's all in there, and he said, uh, don't let anyone deceive you, and today you can go to most pulpits and you'll be deceived. Oh, everything's fine, the economy's great, everything's going great. No, it wasn't great when Jesus was alive and he said that perilous times were coming. But if you're listening to all these false prophets, it's just, oh, the best is yet to come. I mean, it's, we're dominionists, we're taking over the world. And I'd say, well, you're doing a real bad job right now. <laughs> and they pray they can control the weather. I'd say they're also flunking on those tests. They're not doing a very good job. But anyway, they, um, people are beginning to understand that these eugenists, dating back over a century or more, are the billionaire puppet masters who've been coordinating this controlled demolition that is quickly unraveling before our eyes. Uh, I talked to my brother yesterday, and he says, our world is falling apart. I can see the fire from my house. And I'm like, what? The world is caving in. It's like little by little... They're taking things away, and now we're seeing the retail industry. We're seeing this whole thing started th about three some years ago when all of a sudden we were all locked down and stuff. I knew this was it. I didn't know how fast it was coming, and I didn't know what to expect, but we've been studying along these lines, so we knew this control was starting to happen, but we didn't think it was going to happen this fast. But it, it's really happening, even between nations, because this is a new system of the world it's not just one nation and that's why they want to bring in all of the people from other nations the borders are open all that because god wanted nations to be separate yeah. the enemy wants all nations to become one yeah. god wanted people to love him and know him the enemy wants there's more than one god if you look at the old testament which many of these false preachers don't like 
Uh, it's because you learn history from the Old Testament. You see what God liked and didn't like, and that they served other gods under the Old Testament, Moloch and all that, and they're doing the same thing. They've never left, but now they're doing it out in the open. So it can be seen in every industry, in every initiative, every policy change, every manufactured crisis. And I say manufactured crisis because problem, reaction, solution is how they work. Who work? The ones we were just talking about in John 8. Uh, the takeover of governments and the thievery of taxpayer dollars. If you don't think that um, something strange is going on when America is not taking care of itself, but it's sending all of its money uh, elsewhere, that is not a normal situation. So, uh, the takeover of governments, the printing of money, ongoing hoaxes, inventing new industries that cause harm rather than good, the complete control being ushered in to surveil human beings every move the veil between reality and illusion has been lifted. If you get off your phones and off the internet and you do some looking around, you talk to people, people are living in a matrix. They're living in a false reality. I'll tell people, I think the most important thing is, have you studied Agenda 2030? What's that? I remember a banker talking to me when Wyzetta, when I lived over there, I said, have you studied Agenda 2030? And he goes, no, but I'm going to. I saw him again, have you studied it yet? No, nope, but I'm going to. That's the problem, everyone's going to. While these things are happening to us, I didn't like studying it either. And I didn't want to be the one to tell it either. But it's here, and now people are starting to say, you warned us about, well, it was so negative, we didn't want to hear it. We've been conditioned that if something is negative, it's wrong. But Jesus here in John 8, he's saying, you know, what he said was negative. You want to kill me? He didn't say, hey, I'm, I'm on top and rising. Everyone loves me. He says, you're out to kill me. <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on that stuff. But most of what they do, who's they? Well, it's, let's just say it's the synagogue of Satan. Most of what they do consists of illegal actions, money laundering, Fraud, mind control, manipulation, monopolies, and a center control system that makes them believe they hold all the power over billions of people. And I'm kind of going through this. I'm only going to share a few things with this, but always watch out for this say, uh, these, these sayings. It's for your safety. It's for your health. It's for your grandma's safety. It's for... Uh, the internet safety, because as they go digital, they're going to have to remember what we shared. There's always two ways. One of what they say is for the good of the people, and the second is what the agenda really is. Because if they came right out and told you what they were going to do, no one would do it. But if it's for your safety, it's for your grandma, it's for this or for that, well, of course you're going to do it. So it's always to save the people, and now we're going into a huge movement. Romans 1 talks about it, where they love the, the creation more than the, you know, they love the, the earth. Now it's to save the planet. You've got to save the planet. And the problem is they put the planet above people. And they call it the people, there's too many people, and they're the cancer of the earth. So we've been lied to for decades, and that's why Jesus kept telling us, don't love this world. Don't love this world. This culture, there's going to be a war. There's going to be as in the days of Noah. So these global goals are said to be agreed upon by all the world leaders. And who elected these world leaders? We didn't. They were selected. And this is what you need to know. People, people think you can vote. Voting's, I believe, um, like Robert F. Kennedy said in his speech, presidents are not elected, they are selected. Yes. And uh, even people that aren't believers now say, I, I, I don't trust in anything anymore. Because the world leaders are making moves to build a greener, fairer, better world by 2030. That's not too far away. And because things are going so well, I've heard that they've moved up the date to 2025. Let's pray that doesn't happen, but 
So they say that we all have a role in achieving them. And by role, that means that people will be required to be obedient digital citizens with no personal rights or freedoms and will own nothing and be happy. Do you remember that? When they, uh, Schwab said, you will own nothing and be happy. Uh, what makes you happy when you don't own anything? I guess we'll have to find out. This is what they do. They, they get all these uh, laws and they go, we'll have to pass them to see what's in them. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> now there's 17 goals and we're only going to talk about a couple of them right now. These goals are primarily marketing fluff to convince the masses that this is all for the greater good. It should always be a red flag when you hear greater good because that's, that's the system, the greater good. doesn't matter how many people have to die. It's for the greater good. It's for the planet. A perfect example is their push for everyone in the world to have access to a bank account under the guise of equality. Now, this is what's coming. Uh, some of the stuff we haven't seen yet. But um, if you're prepared, you're not scared. Even though things are shaking all around us, God's people should know what's going on. We should know about the B system, 666. We should know that it's been rapidly moving, more so in the last three years. Uh, things have changed, and this is the reset they want. They want to build back better. And like one of my friends said, no, put it back the way it was. <laughs> But they want to have this, now this banking system is huge. And who did Jesus take the whip out to? It was the money changers. Yeah. And this is the, the people that own, a, basically, if you own the money, you own the people. And the love of money, it's the root. Just having money and, and serving people and you doing what, it's not evil, but the love of it. And the problem when they serve money, they can't get enough. And then they cheat, and then they lie. And that's why Jesus drove them out. He drove them out, and boy, can't wait till he has his day, huh? Drives them out once again. But So they want to have a bank account under the guise of equality. They want everyone to become equal and to be able to provide direct assistance to those in poverty. Now, that sounds good. Yet if you review all of the other plans around this financial industry and digital ID, it becomes quite clear that it is for the purpose of creating a universal basic income that is monitored and spending is controlled based on our social score derived from obedience levels, from the ones that are obedient. In other words, uh, how much carbon are you using up? Uh, they have the ESG score now for corporations that uh, rate them on, I wasn't going to get into that, I don't have my notes here, but that's another score that they're doing. That's why you're going to see quality, you're going to see the push for, and it's not just a push, we're being forced to see things. It's, it's, and some of these corporations are being forced also because they've been bought and paid for a lot of them and they have to do what they're told to do. So we're starting to see uh, this so-called equality, uh, inclusion, everything now. And if you know the Lord, he's always invited everybody. Yeah. He's always been once, you know, come to me. Um, one of my favorite things was leading prostitutes to the Lord back in the day and drug, ad drug addicts. We, we were right down on uh, Lincoln Avenue. People would come in off the street. It was great to just lead people to the Lord. Now it's like uh, those doors are closing. And I was asking someone, I said, what's going to happen if we can't, you know, get people um, saved? And he said, there's still the Holy Spirit and he has his way. And I think about nobody really witnessed to me when I became a Christian, the Holy Spirit. So God still has his way. And regardless of what the devil wants to do, as long as the Holy Spirit's still here, people can still receive the Lord. Um, now the global goals... And I'm only going to sh uh, share a couple because they're hard to take. But it's happening, whether we like it or not. Um, number one, together we can feed the hungry, wipe out disease, and give everyone in the world a chance to prosper and live a productive and rich life. Doesn't that sound great? That just sounds absolutely fabulous. What does it mean? 
The United States has stolen, listen to this, trillions. Oh, now we have a debt ceiling and we just can, we can, we can, um, now we can raise more, was it four trillion, trillion? has stolen trillions in taxpayer dollars to allegedly help other countries. America's always helping somebody, always giving our money away, raise, you know, with no success. <laughs> because they are slush funds. Currently, we are all experiencing intentional food shortages. Intentional food shortages. Manufactured supply chain, chain disruptions. Inflation, that's what some people only see. They only see the inflation, the price is going up, but there's a whole lot going on. Massive business closures. Are you seeing anything closed around your town? Restaurants are really struggling. And uh, ma and pa businesses, all those things, they, they kind of got wiped out a couple years ago when everything got locked. Think about it, the whole world got locked down. The whole world got locked down for the Great Reset. Mm -hmm. And this was just a test. Yeah, exactly. uh, chain disruptions, inflation, massive business closures, and towns shutting, shuttered from forced lockdowns. The rollout of a guaranteed basic income pilot program is already happening, did you know that, in 57 cities? Giving out up to $1,000 a month for people to spend however they wish so it can be tracked with the goal to create a federal policy of universal income for all. Number two, end hunger. Wouldn't that be great? End hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. What's really happening? Boy, that doesn't that sound great? I mean, this is a great goal. I'd agree with it if it was true. Farmers are blocked from fertilizer and water. Lab-grown meat, synthetic meat, is replacing cows because cows now are a, a danger to our planet. And eggs are danger, chickens are danger. Anything that they say is a danger is a danger. Uh, Lab-grown synthetic meat, gene-edited produce. This is the APL I was talking about last week, A-P-E-E-L. It says it's going to have longer-lasting produce, but the problem is it's got a chemical coating, sprayed on invisible coating that can't be washed off. Oh, how appetizing. And now... They're buying up and drying up farmlands. I have friends in other countries that are telling me what's going on with the farmland that has been bought up. Uh, and it's actually increased hunger by 31% in Africa. Number three, ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Doesn't that sound good? What's happening? Over 75% of our food is GMO. Major heart disease, strokes, diabetes, and obesity are all off the charts. Wow, I don't know if we're getting healthier, do you? Global education, I'm not going to go into that one. Kids are going to be going to school more and learn less. Education is going to be grooming stations of what they want these new little citizens to be. Keep your eyes on what is going on in school. Don't just use it as a babysitter. It's always been somewhat bad, but not to the extent of what's going to happen now with our poor little ones. And the last one I'm going to share right now, number five, achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Political, economic, and social equity for women will benefit all the world's citizens. What's really happening? Girls have been conditioned to lose all sense of self-identity and gender, leaving them totally confused while being trained to be independent from their parents. They're coming a time of where they really want children to rebel against their parents. I've never heard so many kids that won't talk to their parents anymore. Right. 
My dad was an abusive alcoholic, and I did go for a time where I didn't talk to him because he was so mean and abusive, but I never let him go. I led him to the Lord, and he got saved. Hallelujah. But it, that doesn't give you a right. Some of these parents have done nothing wrong. Our dad used to beat our mom all the time. We saw it, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't disown him. I, just, I didn't talk to him when he was starting to date girls younger than me. That's all I'll say. I couldn't handle that. I couldn't see it. But then when I became a Christian, I walked with the Lord, I had to forgive him. And I realized that being in World War II and Normandy, what he went through, he, he had that uh, post-traumatic stress stuff. I, I mean, he, he became an alcoholic and he drank just to cope with life. And I forgave him. I truly did forgive him. And that's what we're gonna have to do with all of our parents. None of them are perfect. They've all made mistakes. Now, if they're narcissistic, I, uh, I love all you narcissistic people that watch our, I mean, narcissistic abuser <laughs> survival people. <laughs> Let me clarify that. Uh, I love the, the people that have survived, survived narcissism because uh, we are a special breed. I've had that as well. And um, the fact you're still kicking is, is amazing because the, the narcissistic type personalities want to take you down, tear you down, destroy you. Uh, and those kind of parents you have to step away from uh, because narcissistic people, m a lot of them have mental problems and they're very mean, they're very abusive and no one should put up with abuse, but you don't have to be abusive back, right? And that's the way my dad was, he was very abusive but I got to lead him to the Lord. My friend actually did. I sent her to him and, and then I got to mentor them for a while and it's so worth it to see people get saved. But we have to use caution. One uh, person that I know, she said her dad abused her sexually. She forgave him and then sent her kids over there and then he has sexually abused them. That's stupidity. Yeah. That's not forgiveness. Yeah. That is, you know, check the fruit of the tree and um, you know, that's not forgiveness. That's, that's, that means be wise and stay away. But that's another whole message. But here they say, women were conditioned to leave their children and work outside the home to break apart the family unit, all while manipulation tactic, uh, tactics were injected to demoralize men at the same time. There's no way that these men should be put down the way. That whole Me Too thing, that was way excessive. Uh, we've all seen abuse in the workplace. Uh, I worked a in retail a lot, saw a lot, experienced a lot. And there's, but still, this whole movement, there's so much that who knows what the real truth is in some of this. This was an agenda to demoralize men. It's not about equality. Let me say this again. It's not about equality. It's about controlling a population by dividing them. It's about controlling a population by dividing them. And now they flip the coin and it's no longer everything's against blacks. Now everything's against whites. Mm -hmm. Now it's flipped because they want the races divided. And we were a part of, in our church, we had mixed everything. And it was just wonderful that we didn't have that racial barrier. We loved if you were black, white, Chinese, Asian, Africa. We had a multicultural ministry that I've never seen before since then. Uh, too bad that they got off in the word of faith to such, such extreme in the prosperity gospel, which is no gospel at all. But seeing people as more than just their color of skin is how Jesus is. He saved people and it doesn't matter. You know, the blood of Jesus makes us all the same size. And I really believe that. Okay, and I wanna close with this. Uh, we're hearing a lot in the Christian circles again about the pulse, the pulse movement. A lot of people think this is uh, just a great Christian movie um, movement. It's in music. It's all the preachers are coming together. All these churches are having the pulse. It's a global gathering whose mission is to forge unity. That is the goal. Pulse is in nearly all of the major Christian music festivals which have signed on to start taking more, uh, talking more about unity. Now this is part of the inclusion and it's, it's perverted because Jesus is about everybody. But this is 
a false unity. Yeah. It's not biblical unity at all. A pulse leader said, I believe that God is looking to activate. That word activate is a, a new apostolic term. Whenever they say activate or evolve, yeah. truth doesn't evolve, but they are evolving and they're activating and they're, that's all part of this deception that you're going to another level. He said, I believe that God is looking to activate. How do you get activated? <laughs> get off your butt and get moving. No, uh, I believe that God is looking to activate all of us everyday believers to share the gospel now, is what they say. Um, what is the true gospel? Jesus demonstrated his love by being God, came to earth, born of a man, being both God and man. He paid for our sins as a lamb of God to keep us from the judgment of our sins so that we could be in fellowship with God today and be with him for eternity. And keep your eyes on eternity. Everything that we do for the Lord, even though it might not look like we're being rewarded now, people you bless, people you give money to, this or that, God's recording all that. And he's going to reward us. Our rewards might not ever come in this life. But as long as you know God's happy and you're doing everything as under the Lord, you're doing everything as an audience to one, that's our goal, is that we are here to serve him. And we're going to be with him for eternity. It doesn't matter what all these things are on the earth that we're going through right now. There's going to be a day where eternity doesn't end. Just think of it. You're going to a place, and they say it doesn't even exist because they don't believe the Bible. They don't believe in hell either, but it's going to be hot there, uh, that you're going to live forever. So even though they want to destroy this body, make it transhuman, put chips in our brain, put chips all over the place, they want to take your consciousness and download it into a, into a robot. They want to do all this stuff because they don't want to die. They're afraid to die. We're not afraid to die. Death, where is your sting? When we die, we believe our spirit goes to be with the Lord. Our outer man perishes, but our inward man is renewed day by day. This outer man is getting older. It's harder to even face it, isn't it? <laughs> You think when you're 30, you're going to live forever. But as you, get, as you age, you realize this, this isn't it. But you're born, I was telling my granddaughter, we're born to literally go through the circle of life and die. Everybody's going to die. But we're not afraid of death because we know what's on the other side of death. Eternity. So that gives us hope. And most importantly, Jesus, he physically resurrected in the same body on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, read that. And he is alive and glorified, sitting at the right hand of the Father in heaven. So we should be preaching that gospel at these meetings, but they're not. They're just talking about Jesus. Just talking about Jesus is not the gospel. Do you know why? Because the Bible says there's another Jesus. And there's another gospel. This Jesus died and rose again and died for our sins. They don't talk about your sins. They say that you really don't have any sin. And it doesn't matter. You don't need to repent because God loves you. He loves all of us. That's their new commercial. He loves all of us. Well, the thing is, he does. But when you accept him, we change. And we have love in our heart. We don't want to do evil. We don't want to turn on people. We don't want to kill people. We want to do the right thing. So just talking about Jesus, and, and one of this, the head of the word of faith, he always closes his message with, Jesus is Lord. And I'm like, I don't want to serve your Jesus. This guy is a loony tune, that's all I'll say. Um, used to go to his conventions, unfortunately, but thank God we can wake up. But just talking about Jesus isn't the gospel. It's good to share about Jesus, but one must be able to give the gospel to one to receive salvation. So the gospel is more. It's not just, it's just, the, again, the gospel is not talking about Jesus or how he loves us. <laughs> That's all they talk about. He just loves you. He just loves you. And you're a homophobe if you don't agree, right? This is what has become our, for some to claim to be evangelizing. But it doesn't give you any way out to change the way. I got desperate and I wanted the Lord because I didn't like the way my life was going. I think I was 21 when I turned to the Lord. I wanted a way out. To give these people no hope or no change, 
This is considered a, a unity movement, but it is a false unity movement. Just heads up for you out there. Um, this movement invited the Pope to address one million Christians gathered in Washington, D.C. for Together 2016 Reset. And Zelensky also met with the Pope last week, I think it was the week before, whatever, and gave him a present. Did you hear about that? It was a painting of Mary, and she was holding uh, baby Jesus, but baby Jesus wasn't there. He was blacked out. So what does that mean? Let, email me and tell me what you think it means. I think I know what it means. I think Christianity is coming in for another uh, erasing Jesus out of the voca out of the YouTubes and all the other things. Uh, we'll have to see what happens here. But there are many other celebrity type leaders tied to these false movements, like the Word of Faith, Prosperity, and the NAR, the New Apostolic Reformation. And I want to say. This is a trap. This is what they said in Together 2016, and I got this taken off my Facebook, so I don't know if, how this will go here. It says, we are humbled and honored by this, the Pope's involvement, and we are eager to share his message with the crowd that gathers at Together 2016. There is no unity, as the scripture states, without the gospel. And they're saying that there's unity without the gospel. And it doesn't matter which God you serve, we're all one. And so many other things I could say there. But this is, there's no unity because now what the, some of the evangelicals are saying is that we don't believe in the Old Testament and we don't need to lean on scriptures. One of the head evangelicals is saying we don't need, they're shifting away from scriptures. This is very, very dangerous, but this is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to, to raise up a people that don't know the Lord. This is a, a war against God. Yeah. Don't take it personally, <laughs> but you're on the right side. Even though it looks like we're not winning right now, he does win in the end, Amen. right? And he's allowing people to make free choices right now. Free will, we have free will. Thank God for free will. And we can choose. Choose this day who you want to serve. Yeah. So Father, we thank you that this helped people that People will see that there's a lot of deception going on, but we don't have to be deceived. There's a lot of scary things going on, but we don't have to be afraid. You said over 365 times, fear not, fear not, for I am with you. And there's just such a peace because we're not afraid of death. Even though we don't want to, we know on the other side is eternity. Amen. So help us stay strong, stay strong in the Bible, in the word, not some false translation, but what the word of God says, that we stand, and having done all, we stand, and we endure to the end. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison. Her backup channel, Roberta Morrison 2, the number 2, and on the Living in His Presence Church website where you can access the messages on the top center of the main web page. There are free audio downloads of the messages. We are viewer supported. On the main web page at the top right is a give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time. <music>